and Frankie Dottori, and he gallops into the lead. This sensational star, Frankie on fire. Stradivarius wins again. Two Gold Cups. Clearly, you've seen this a million times, but do, you, do the hairs still stand up on the back of the neck when you're watching something like this, when it's a special wolf? Yeah, it does, and you to watch them move and just the whole demeanour and their presence. But you know, horses have been coming up here for 350 years, and you only have to think of the great ones yeah. that have. So there's a certain amazing history to it. But when you get a horse like this come up, yeah, it makes it so when any of the, the, the class also went, I mean, Henry was here with Frankel. I used to stand and have to watch Frankel every day with Henry. And just when Frankel had gone by, I said, right, that's a minor coming now. And Henry said, I haven't got time and it'd be gone. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, there was a lot of camaraderie here and you, the horses are all around you and you get to know, other, the, the, you get to know the better ones of other people's. And it's, look, it's a pleasure to watch them. It's like watching Mr. Federer limbering up. And from your perspective, when we're watching this, what are you looking for each time you see him? Well, obviously the action, demeanour, everything about him, that he seems happy, that the, the rider, Brad in this case, got the pace right, which he has. Just nice routine canters with a beautiful skyscape behind them. Who could ask for more? I didn't realise that, of course, this horse first struck to prominence where an able struck to prominence at Newcastle. That was the first victory on the all-weather. Newcastle on the all-weather. What is it that you like about Well, Newcastle? first of all, of the all-weather tracks, it's a long way the best because you've got a straight mile and a slight rise at the finish. Right. It's a true race. A lot of the other all-weather tracks, they go quickly and then they pull it up at the bend right. and, and then they kick again and you don't get an evenly run race. Whereas Newcastle, it's an honest open track. Did you think he was as special when you saw him win at Newcastle? Well, he'd run well down here behind yeah, Cracksman. Cracksman yeah. yeah, but I think he he was just taking a little more time to get to get his act together. But when he showed his greatest is when immediately when you stepped him up in distance. Stradivarius now bursting through. Black jacket. Stradivarius wearing away at Count Octave. Well inside the last. And Stradivarius goes on to win the vast. Well, when he came in, you know, he was... Uh, he wasn't a big see the stars by any things. White socks, white face, and he reminded me of the minstrel. who was a horse who was at Vincent O'Brien's when I was there, and uh, he won a derby and a King George. And I thought, well, if he's half as good as the minstrel, would be all right. And he was he was always a great character. He's an enormous personality, very full of himself, very cocky. He's the kind of person who went on a bus trip. He'd never stop talking. And uh, to that extent, he's been a lot of fun to train. When he first arrived, I remember him, he lived in that box just over there. And you look out the office window and see his, his white blaze and his chestnut face looking back at you. And obviously, it's been a bit of a long road since then. But he's a remarkable horse, and, you know, to sustain that level of form for those years and uh, to keep, you know, keep sound and keep mentally enjoying the game is, is pretty special. Well, I think the key thing about him is that he's been a lot of fun to, to be around. You know, he's a very flamboyant horse, as we see on track, as you've seen off track this morning in his training. And it's remarkable, he must have been up Warren Hill where we were earlier a thousand plus times and every day he goes up there with, with the same zest and zeal he's had since he first arrived. He likes to, to, to uh, say hello to the ladies, shall we speak, uh, every morning. It's funny, he, got, he, he seems to be able to pick out the, the best fillies in, on the heath in the morning and he, and he gives them a little shout, so he's obviously filling his diary already. But um, yeah, he's a, character in, uh, he's a character in the box, he's a character out. But uh, he's, a, he's a very special horse. He can be quite cheeky sometimes, and he's always happy, and he thrives in his work. So he's just, he's just a unique animal, really. Of course, his owner, Bjorn, set out to breed a derby winner, and you, and you said that, and he's ended up breeding the most amazing staying horse. Is that sometimes what can happen when you set down one road like that? Well, I think if you wind up with a horse, trying to breed a derby horse, you wind up with a horse as good as this. It's an amazing achievement in itself. I mean, Bjorn has put his heart and soul into his breeding operation with his mare, studying the pedigrees, always looking for that horse who, who, who's going to win, win the derby. But uh, in this horse, he's created a horse of a lifetime. I mean, he has such a following now, the fan mail comes here in sacks. I don't think we've ever had a seven-year-old here. 
look, he seems, in, you know, if he wants it more than ever, if I'd be brutally honest, he's a little bit more fierce in the box, a little bit more um, coltish on the, on the heath. But when he gets on the gallop and, or up the canter, he's the same old self. Uh, I think actually Frankie actually said the other day, I, I said, how did he work? He said, I think he's getting quicker. I said, really? <laughs> but uh, if, if only that were true, it'd be nice. We know that you fancy yourself as a trainer. You've seen the horse. We've seen the horse this morning. Tell us what the a pupil assistant trainer thinks of the horse this morning. I'm much better when, when I'm on the horse than when I'm on the ground. He looks great. He doesn't have to do himself in the morning. I rode him on uh, last week. I suspect I'll ride him again just before the Gold Cup. The fingers crossed we get it there in one piece and we roll the dice and go for it. Is it nerve-wracking still every time thinking just make sure he's all right or she's all right? And... Yeah, I mean I think it, it, look, most trainers are neurotics if the truth be known. They're just quite good at disguising it and you spend your whole time. It's like when you're training footballers and I always remember Sir Alex Ferguson telling me that pre-season training he found the most difficult because you're always concerned about any little niggle, any little injury. So you're always watching that, or a horse not quite feeling right. So you have your antenna up all the time and that is what you're watching and feeling for. And so yes, it is a little bit like walking on eggshells. There's no doubt about that. Stradivarius, the yellow cap. Stradivarius is narrowly in front. He leads by a neck or so. Stradivarius has won the Gold Cup. I think his first ask at Gold Cup was the toughest of his races, taking on some really fine horses. And he, he came and win it, and then they came at it again, and he grit his teeth and he went again. He's got a phenomenal heart for the game. He loves the train. He comes out here in the morning, he shouts and screams and says hello to everybody. He's quite vociferous. And of course, for a, a stayer, he has a very, he has a one deadly weapon. That's his turn of foot. Stradivarius in a little bit of a pocket at the moment. Can he get out? The gap is appearing now. Here comes Stradivarius and Frankie Dottori, and he gallops into the lead. This sensational stayer, Frankie on fire. Stradivarius wins again. You know, you, you watch it from the TV, but when I'm on top, is is an amazing feeling to, to be able to to, to, to follow the horses in front of you and then pass them instantaneously. So it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling when, you, when, you, when you're on top of a horse to have such a change of gear. I think the thing about Frankie, he, he literally when he gets on a horse, he becomes part of that horse. And if you see his style of riding, so if you like physiologically or mechanically he does, but also here. And that he's very good at feeling what type of horse it is. And he's quite, with his experience now, he he clocks it very fast. He enjoys riding this horse. The horse is not unlike him. I should think Frankie going into a discotheque in his youth would be rather like this horse when he goes into the paddock and starts shouting and screaming at everyone. So I think to that extent they were probably born to be together. He's a very clever horse because it, he, he does what he has to do, but he doesn't overdo it. <laughs> I feel like me. Once, once, he, once he got the race won, he, he, he thinks he's done enough. The three-time Ascot Gold Cup winner, Stradivarius, is back. This is a horse who doesn't grind it out. He does it with that class. And let's hope that uh, at seven years old that he can still maintain that. He, he ran a nice trial the other day. Um, and we'll just now build him up to, to the main event. He's not small, but he's not overly big. But unbelievable heart, unbelievable will to, to, to get in front. You know, he's just an amazing horse. Along with Enable, he's become a bit of a people's horse. So, uh, like in that sense, he's, he's a type of legend and uh, I'm sure he'll be remembered that way when he retires. He's obviously up there with, with the greatest. It's a great achievement already and I mean, it'd be an even bigger achievement if he could go and do it again. If it comes off, I think it'll be a bit like, uh, I think it'll sink in later and, and probably these things I think will sink in a lot more when he's retired and we look back and go, my God, what an achievement that was. And, I think already what he's done, he's going to be remembered for one of the greats and uh, he, he won't be forgotten easily. Now, Dad, as you know, he, he takes everything in his stripes. What will it mean for him for this little horse to win four Gold Cups? Well, I think it means for everyone a huge amount and obviously for him, it needs to take him a long time to win one of them and to have a horse who has been capable of, of winning four would be yeah, a tremendous excitement. And for you in first year as joint licence holder, another big victory on the CV, what does it mean for you? Well, we'll have to get there first, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's very special to have him now. I'm sure with all the 
will be nervous enough on the day. I think if he, he runs a huge race and he's right there in the finish at, at, at that age is, is, is a great achievement. As I said, these are never easy, particularly not two and a half miles around uh, Ascot in a Gold Cup. But it, look, it would be a massive achievement for the horse. It's really probably about the horse and the owner breeder, then the jockey, then the trainer. But, you know, we'll see what Frankie says for, before the race. We'll see what he says after. You might tell the story about when you came off the lime kilns. Oh, yeah. No, maybe not. Maybe not. He's, what about, what about the early it. celebration at Goodwood? And then you had to go yeah, again. Yeah, You're waving at John. He was, he was in about that. With the old... <laughs> with the horse, the old horse knows when you say, when woo, he woos. <laughs> you nearly went over the handlebar. I have the pressure of doing it for him because I want him to be remembered as one of the greats. He's probably going to have one last shot at this, so uh, I just want to make sure that I get it right. And if he wins and makes it four in a row? Oh, it'd be amazing, you know. At the moment, I don't want to think if he wins. I just hope we can get him there in one piece and uh, as the best form as we can. The celebration is always easy after. Not, not my, right now, my focus is uh, try to get him there as best as we can and, and get the job done. <laughs>